Hello, everybody, and welcome to a conversation with Darren Oberto, who is exhibiting in the seventh annual Evanston Made Group show. And he's also the winner of the best Zoom background contest. Congratulations, Darren. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Uh, that's a real background. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about the details at the end of the interview, but I really, really appreciate it. So much better than this white wall. Um, tell us what you are exhibiting, please, in the group show. Um, this year, I'm uh, exhibiting a larger piece than I, I've presented uh, in Evanston shows in the past because it's moved virtually and I figured there's now no size restraint. So um, I'm doing a piece from my turntable series. Um, it's it's uh, uh, a drawing process that is kinetic um, where I introduce ink to frosted mylar as it spins, uh, creating this um, circular kind of mandala. Um, it, 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 uh, the image itself is, is, I think, a good example of this series. It's monochromatic um, and uh, it, the textures and patterns um, acknowledge a, a sense of um, microcosmic and macrocosmic uh, kinds of space ideas. And it's not hand painted, it's literally drizzled over the mylar. Yes, yep. Yeah, I, I just lay all the materials in place and introduce chemicals and things like that to create the reaction. And they're beautiful. And is this one that you're exhibiting, is it a backlit one or is it just the mylar in a frame? It's just the mylar in the frame. Um, all, all of that series, they can all be backlit. Um, so, uh, you know, that, that one could be put in a, in a, a light box. And, and yes. like that people are busting out the size limit, which we have been notorious for keeping. Um, what is, what's happening in your studio right now? What are you working on? Um, well, it, it's, it's, it's a little more difficult to get into the studio is, um, my, my studio is at the Alley Gallery and, um, you know, I have to kind of keep in mind to give everybody space that's working there. So I have to, you know, I have to either go in on times when there's nobody there or, or uh, on days where I'm supposed to be there. Um, so it's been a little difficult. I've, I've been bringing some projects home. Um, I did a large sewing project where I had um, previously made cyanotypes that are about eight feet by five feet of chain link fence with barbed wire at the top. Um, and and I, I, this was an opportunity to break out an old sewing table and and work at home, you know, it's non-toxic and uh, a lot of my work is messy or, or, or not good to make um, around that In family. your living room. <laughs> um, so I, I sewed this piece together. So now it's, it's approximately 25 by five feet, put grommets in and I wanna, I wanna now photograph it, figure out a place where I can photograph it. It's called Fenced In, Fenced Out. Nice. Uh, and then um, I've also been doing small watercolor self-portraits. Oh, wait a minute, hold on. I'm gonna have to get a little picture of that too because that's pretty awesome. Nice. And are you selling those on your website? Where can people buy those? They, the, they're, they're not for sale. They're just, um, you know, I'm, I'm here by myself. You know, it's just something to work on. Um, kind of uh they're beautiful do you typically work in watercolor i used to, nice. I used to. Um, my, my father was a, an accomplished watercolor painter and um when i was first starting to get interested in painting he, he taught me some techniques and and, and preparations and, and uh um that's kind of what started my, my painting um was, was in watercolor and, and uh You've also been sharing a lot of images on your Instagram of what a photography project that I don't want to misrepresent it. So talk to us a little bit about that project. Um, I call that faceted. Um, and I, I made a kaleidoscope out of mirrors that has a block of wood at the bottom. And I photographed that apparatus. So it captures the landscape, but in the center, there's the triangle of, of parts of that landscape rearrange 
Um, and um, I, 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 uh, I also have another series where I have a similar apparatus, but with a crystal ball. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they are more about aesthetics. Um, and they're, they're, they're uh, a project again that I can do at home or while I'm on family vacation or, or, or do the Photoshop work at home. Um, again, I like that they encourage me to look at the horizon on the lake in a very different way. I mean, it's, they're sure. wonderful. They're very yeah. fun and playful. Yeah, I, I've gotten some uh, beautiful uh, shots of the moon recently. Ooh. Um, so, you know, I, I need to print those and see how they turned out. Nice. Talk to us a little bit. Um, you mentioned that your father was an accomplished watercolor artist. Talk to us about your journey into owning the title artist and making art the way that you do today. Yeah. Um, well, the journey, you know, I, I've always been around materials and encouraged. Um, probably not good at other things, <laughs> which kind of sent me on a trajectory. Um, uh, so um, there, there's really never been any other thing that I really wanted to do. Um, when I was 15, I started working in restaurants, started as a busboy and washing dishes and then waiting tables and bartending and this and that. Um, and uh, I, I was, always kind of interested in food and wine and, and things like that. So at one point I maybe considered, you know, the, this art thing is, is um, it's, it's a lot of trouble and I'm getting to an age where I might need to get a real job. So I considered maybe studying for a sommelier accreditation at that point. Oh. Uh, but right around that time, I, I was also working at, at the Alley Gallery um, at that point and, uh, the original owner of the shop was, was his health was deteriorating. And uh, Ross um, and uh, another staff member wanted me to get more involved at that point. Um, and then over the next few years, the, my, my culinary desires kind of evaporated and um, my focus went in, into that as being my kind of uh, supplementary uh, life preserver. Life uh, preserver, your financial life preserver. How long ago was that that you leaped into that? Um, I would say, uh, I, I think around 2007. Okay. Is when I, when I got out of the restaurant business. And for people who don't know, the Alley Gallery, a, a well regarded framing um, shop with a um, exhibiting space in it and a gift shop, there's through the back door, there's four art studios, artist studios where people work. And during the open studio tours, you can go in and look at the exhibits, but then you can also go back and see four really unique, different artists working. It's such an awesome building. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a wonderful spot. Um, you know, it's just magical. Uh, um, I, I, I owe so much to, um, the other people that I interact with there, uh, Ross, Avram, and Chris. Um, Ross does macro photography. So anytime I have a, a <laughs> photography question, you know, he's teaching me how to, you know, how to operate my camera all the time. Um, Chris is an accomplished um, uh, oil painter uh, specializing in, in landscape. Um, so we're constantly like, uh, critiquing each other's paintings um, and is, is really, I think, helpful. Uh, Avram's and textiles. Um, we've collaborated on a couple pieces where I've made cyanotypes of some of his artwork. Nice. Uh, so there, there's always been these interactions between my, I, I call them studio mates or coworkers. I'm so glad that um, you didn't become a sommelier. That makes me really happy. We wouldn't be having this conversation. Who are your inspirations? Who do you turn, what or who do you turn to um, to inform your current practice? Um, I, I could list off several artists. Um, uh, 
you know, and, and some of them are contemporary, some of them are, are mid-century. Um, uh, I, I think Marcel Duchamp is, is kind of, I, I think he's the cornerstone of, of contemporary art. Um, but I, I particularly like um, uh, I, I enjoy seeing the process in somebody's career um, and variety. Um, I, I, for the, those reasons, I'm really connected to Robert Rauschenberg mm -hmm. and um, uh, Rashi Johnson, who has Evanston connections um, from what I've seen somewhere. Um, mm -hmm. uh, um, I, I, because I feel the way that I work, you know, I have all these very, very different things going on all the time. And, and um, I, I can see it, other people's practice in that same way. And it, for me, it, it, it's, it affirms that I'm on the path that I want to be on um, as far as being able to express different things in, in different ways. Um, for full disclosure, Darren has been, Darren and Ross in particular, um, have been two essential players in the foundational building of this sort of Evanston made moment and movement, I should say, not moment. And you were just recounting before we started recording that the first shows that you were hanging, you had a little, little, little one in your life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The the first first or second year was at the noise center, and and my daughter for several of the pieces I had to have her in an ergo carrier or in the in the pack and play with, um, you know, and uh, you know, it was pretty fond. And then later on, she was toddling around at the art center while we were hanging stuff. And you know, she's she's always been mindful to not touch what she's not supposed to, and no, no, um, her way to be, be around artwork. Well, and she's also a, a fixture at all these art openings. Like, you know, yeah. she appears and she's so well dressed all the time. And, um, it's just yeah. so the, lovely the, seeing her. And <laughs> she's the set designer, actually. Yeah, I miss, um, I miss her energy. And, but I also, this would have been, the seventh, you know, or the fifth time that we installed a show together. And I remember last year we installed 300 pieces at the Evanston Art Center. I shouldn't say we, you did. You. Uh, there, there, were, there were a lot of folks helping out, you know, not just me, but um, I believe there was uh, Stephen Murphy. Stephen Murphy. Help out and um, Dave Ford. Ford. Of course. Right. And, uh, uh, the staff at the art center and, and several interns that they had on hand, um, Kira. Um, yeah, that was just a tremendous amount of work. How are you doing not being at work? Last question. Are you... Um, I, I do work. Um, Ross and I, throughout the early part of the quarantine, we were separating the days. So we, you know, we had to spend time with our parent, Jessica. So, um, so oh, we would go, right. go in and work on trying to figure out how to do um, things virtually or finish up old balances or, um, you know, just, you know, just kind of. <laughs> Keep it going. I heard from some people that you and Ross were doing like virtual framing consultations and that people were actually still getting work framed. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're actually very busy right now. Um, uh, we've been able to to either pick or pick up or deliver. We'll we'll do free pickup and delivery within seven miles, you know, and and, uh, and then we can um, right now we can have in-house designs as well. Nice. So it depends on where your comfort level is, you know, because I know that like people's confidence in in in, in uh, being able to get out may be a little shaky. So you know, if that's it, we're happy to pick it up. You can stay at home. Nice. Um, it, it's the the flow isn't like it used to be. We're relearning a little bit, mm -hmm. but, um, but overall, I, I've been pretty happy with you know all of the the end products and, and and getting people you know situated. I know a lot of folks have been kind of cooped up in their house and 
wanting to like redecorate and re rethink things or they're doing a deep cleaning and they found pictures yep. old family pictures or so on so i think we're we're you know I, I think we're able to address those desires that's wonderful i'm so glad and i'm am so grateful um not only for your time today but for your really fantastic backdrop it's it's very festive and awesome and i hope it's for a good cause it is there is a birthday in the household happy birthday thank you darren i totally appreciate you Thank you. I appreciate you.